Hello everyone and welcome to Switch Up. In today's video we are going to be looking at a game that's just about to release on the Nintendo Switch called South of the Circle. This is a game heavily driven by its narrative and publishers 11-bit studios asked if we would play through it and give you a breakdown of exactly what it's all about. We thank them for sponsoring today's video and what exactly is South of the Circle? Well, let's find out. So South of the Circle is a narrative driven adventure game with a deep multi-layered cinematic story. You play as Peter, a lecturer at Cambridge University in a non-linear story which takes place just after Peter crash lands in a post Cold War treaty Antarctica and follows his search for help to escape his desperate situation. As well as this though, the narrative is expanded and context is given as to how Peter ended up in such a position by recounting his life prior to this point, his career trajectory, his friendships and personal relationships and his views on the events transpiring around the world at that time. Your actions will have a bearing on how Peter's journey pans out with decisions needed to be made at key points in regards to his aspirations and the pressures of power which will shape the aforementioned relationships and career path. How this plays out in terms of gameplay is that you'll take part in a myriad of conversations as the story continues, both in terms of the flashbacks and during Peter's current predicament. And whilst you don't have dialogue options as such as you may well do in games that work on a similar premise, instead you'll have a number of emotional reactions to a point made by another character and you must then choose which of these best suits Peter's mindset which will then lead his response. It could be that you choose to answer in an assertive manner when questioned by your boss, in a caring way to your injured travel partner, or in a panicked and confused way when radioing for help. As I alluded to earlier, certain decisions will shape the narrative. It could be something as simple as addressing yourself with your full, more formal title of doctor to a new colleague, or something with a more lasting impact like agreeing to go on an anti-war march, with the consequences this may have on your career. It's a very interesting story and the non-linear style really did enhance the narrative. I especially liked the transitions from Peter's current scenario to a moment in his past. There was always a nice amount of visual symmetry to these two situations despite the two actions being undertaken being vastly different. South of the Circle was created by BAFTA winners State of Play and at the end of this video we will have the answers to some questions we put to their creative director Luke Whittaker about the creative process so do stick around for that. As you would have seen it uses a low poly art style and also deployed motion capture technology in order to emote the relevant message through body language. The highlight for me though was the quality of the voice acting with actors such as Gwilym Lee playing Peter he previously starred in Bohemian Rhapsody as well as putting his voice to Sid in Final Fantasy XIV. Olivia Vanell plays his colleague and love interest Clara and it also includes others such as Anton Lesser whose credits include Game of Thrones and The Crown and Michael Fox who appeared in Downton Abbey. Everyone plays their role fantastically well which really helps to make the relationships feel so much more realistic and therefore builds your investment in each character. How it all rests on that one final paper we need just to get anywhere. I know. I, I, I know. I wish they'd actually come and see me teaching. I, I don't know why they don't. And I'd love to go and see other lecturers if I were them. That doesn't sound right. And wherever they went, they, they went in a hurry. Uh, there's footprints everywhere. And they left a mess in their living quarters. Broken glass, uh, an overturned chair, that sort of thing. Aside from the voice acting, the music also does a great job of creating the appropriate emotional setting, whether it's for a poignant moment or a perilous situation in the Antarctic. South of the Circle costs £11.69 and regional equivalents are on your screen now. There will be a launch discount of 10% and a further discount available for owning another of 11-bit studios published games on the Switch which would take it up to 24% and this ends on the 9th of August. Do check out the eShop for the full details of that particular promotion. For anyone looking for a deep and emotional story which sets its roots in historical events and weaves an original tale around this should definitely look to give this one a go. So as I said earlier, we asked creative director of State of Play, Luke Whittaker, a few questions pertaining to his career in the industry and about the production of this game in particular. 
I've asked my wife to read out Luke's answers just to allow for some differentiation between the questions and the answers for you, the viewers, but these are his views and insights. When exactly did you get into game development? That depends what you call a game. I started making games in Flash. My first job was making these short online games for a web design company in London. After a time making and freelance, I co-founded State of Play and we were one of the first indies to develop games for the iPad. The indie games revolution at the time was enthralling. It was a revolution in technology and a revolution in how free we became to create art. It's still a wonderful thing that there's a way we can create the games we want to create and get them seen all over the world. What in particular inspired the creation of this game? Going way back, it was a novel I read called The Amazing Adventures of Cavalier and Clay. It's an epic novel which deals with politics and the identity of two migrants leading up to World War II. There's this one section set in Antarctica where one of them comes across a stranger and is called upon to make a life or death decision, and I thought what an incredible setup for a game. It's also been inspired by movies like Eternal Sunshine of the Spotless Mind, and you'll see us push what's possible with interactive dialogue just as games like Oxenfree and Firewatch did. But spoilers, the original heart of it is still there. As well as many other hard choices, you'll still get to experience that heart-wrenching decision on the ice. How long did it take to make? It took four years, longer than expected, but I'm so glad we gave it the time to grow into what it needed to be. Early on, it looked far more like a game of pure exploration with a story of escaping, but I wanted the characters to be stronger. I spent time writing a novel to develop the depth of story, and from then on we knew it was really about expressing emotions and ideas as beautifully as possible. That's how it evolved into this epic development. Involving a research trip into Antarctica in 2018, a 300-page interactive script, full body motion capture, A-list actors and the biggest budget we've ever worked with. At each stage we kept asking ourselves, can we really keep getting more ambitious? But once an idea feels good, there's this deep desire to see it through. Maybe I have a problem with this. To go back on these ideas would have been a missed opportunity. The game had to be made like this. Did you run into any particular hurdles during the creation process? Yeah, that ambition meant we were sometimes learning on the job and we were some of the experts in their field. We were doing things like five minute motion capture takes with facial animation and voice recording, many actors at once. The actors loved it, they could treat it like they were doing theatre and I really believe it was essential to capture the best performances. Recording body and face separately in small chunks is never going to have the same feeling, but recording it all at once, it's a hell of a lot of data to record, process and fix. It meant delays while glitches were ironed out, and in the future we definitely make sure we have plans in place for this. And finally, what advice would you give to any up and coming indie developers? Make what you want to make, not what you think others will like. We made a misstep early on when we were making a sports game which we didn't care much about, thinking it would help fund the things we did care about, but the game went nowhere, and after soul searching we decided to make a game for the love of it. It was only when the game was a success that we realised that actually, this is a better strategy. Thank you to Luke for answering our questions. Hopefully it's given you a bit of insight into the development of this game. I really did enjoy my time with this one. A very well-crafted story and highly polished to boot. And again, thank you to 11-Bit Studios for sponsoring this video. Please do check out the links below if you are interested in South of the Circle at all. A quick thank you to our Patreons, as always, for your continued support and to each and every one of you for watching our videos. I want to thank you to my wife for reading out Luke's answers. Take care, and until next time, of course, Happy gaming.